Oh boy, I'm gonna say it. Can the iPad replace your laptop? Hi everybody and welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt and yeah, that's a phrase that we're all pretty much uh, familiar with at this point. It's something you'll hear in all sorts of iPad reviews. And with the rumor mill saying that there are probably iPad Pros on the horizon, you can bet that those are gonna be words you hear uh, very often in the next couple of weeks or a month or two. And so I wanted to talk about what I think about that phrase, why I think that people who just kind of like scoff at people who say that and are like, oh, you're a video editor, of course it doesn't work for you, or you're a developer, of course it doesn't work for you. I, I can see where they're coming from, but I think that there's a more fundamental thing with the iPad that's holding it back from fulfilling the needs for everybody. So let's jump into it. So like I said, when you hear this in reviews and people are gonna say, can the iPad finally, they're gonna say finally, replace your laptop? The answer is gonna be no, probably. Like if you're the sort of person who's asking that question, you're probably going to come to the conclusion as you have every year for the past 11 years, no. And so there are definitely people who the iPad can replace your laptop. There's kind of people with big uh, audiences. I think about Federico Vatici. I think about my buddy, Chris Lawley, who uh, was on the channel last week. These people use the iPad as a full-on computer to do real work, and it works great for them, and they're happy. I also think about the millions of people who use their uh, iPads as their primary computer, and they're totally happy. They just don't blog about it. They don't publicly talk about it, and they just kind of go along with their day. I'm kind of jealous of those people. <laughs> but uh, the iPad is definitely not for everybody. And uh, again, I mentioned like video producers, uh, app developers, they of course aren't gonna work with the iPad. Their software isn't there. The system is really too locked down for the sorts of things that they do. But I was thinking about my work and I'm a niche. Everyone's a niche, everyone's their own niche, right? There's no person who's like the average person, but we all kind of have our things. But I have been working from home for the past year at my desk and I use a Mac, right? I use a MacBook Pro, a 2015 model. and if work came to me today and said, hey, you're using a six-year-old computer, you're due for an upgrade, uh, what do you want to get? You can get anything. You can get a laptop, desktop, Mac, Windows, iPad, Android tablet. What do you want? I would ask for a new Mac. <laughs> like, I wouldn't ask for a new iPad. Even though I use an iPad Pro, I'm recording into an iPad Pro right now. I wouldn't say, yeah, give me a new iPad Pro. That'll be perfect for me. I don't think it would be. And so that got me thinking, what is the thing? What is the thing that's connecting video producers, like professional video producers, app developers and people like me who are doing kind of an office job, office jobby work. I'm kind of more developer focused, um, but I don't actually do development. I just kind of work with development teams. So what's the thing? I think the thing that's connecting all of these is parallelism. I'm not saying multitasking because the iPad does multitask right now, but it's this idea of being able to work on multiple things at the same time. And importantly, having confidence that the system is going to keep doing those things, even if you're not focused on them right now. Um, and so I think about, um, and this is a niche thing, but again, again, we're all our own niches. Uh, I think about when I run terminal commands, I run some scripts on a server. So I SSH into a server and I run a script and some of these scripts take like two, three minutes to run. They run, they do some big processes. And so what do I do? On the iPad, I can log into like ISH or like iShell or like these different terminal apps and I can SSH into a server, that's great and everything. And I can run the script and it'll work. But I kind of have to stare at the terminal window while it's working. If I just like swipe up and then go to like Safari and start doing something in the browser, that terminal isn't gonna stay open forever. It's not gonna maintain its internet connection and there's a good chance that it's going to kill that connection before it's done running the script. And so I can't do that. So I need to either keep it on screen and just stare <laughs> at a blinking cursor while a script is running, or I need to like do multitasking and always keep it on the screen and I can't do two other apps at the same time if I wanna do that. It's annoying. I think about the same thing with rendering a video uh, file, even if it's 30 seconds or 20 minutes, like if it's a short or long render, either way, I wanna start it, I wanna hide that window and I wanna go do my other work. I also think about uh, using external displays and how uh, I'm able to get more screen real estate when I'm plugged into a display. A lot of us are having laptops as our kind of company issued device, but oftentimes when we're at a desk, we're hooked up to a display and we get more screen real estate. With the iPad, it just basically, there's some slight ex exceptions, but it basically just mirrors your display uh, on the bigger screen. So you just get bigger things, not more things. Uh, so that's kind of a limitation. 
I also think about just using this extra space to have multiple windows open, to have like my Slack window kind of like behind everything else, but just off to the side so I can see a couple of the channels that I'm actually, uh, I actually think are really important. And so I can see when things happen specifically in those, but I don't have to have all of Slack open all the time. All of these things kind of add up to this idea of my computer being able to function on multiple things at the same time. And for me to move my focus as I go throughout the day, seamlessly between them. I think that's a thing that the iPad, I don't wanna say struggles with, I just think it's fundamentally not as much about. I think that the iPad from day one was a single function device. It shipped with iOS or iPhone OS 3.2 or something. It didn't have multitasking. Uh, it didn't have multitasking until iPhone OS 4 shipped on it. I think maybe they changed the name to iOS at that point. We don't need to worry about that now. But basically it shipped and it ran one thing at a time. With iOS 4, it added multitasking, which was really just audio apps can play audio in the background. And that was like, that was basically it. There were a few other little things, but it was really small things could happen kind of in the background. Then with iOS 9, 9.2 and 9.3, one of those, they added split screen, they added multitasking, and that was a huge upgrade. Then they added file system in uh, a couple years after that. And so they've added more things. They've added some stuff that lets you do some multitasking, but it's really fundamentally at its core, a one app at a time system, at most a two apps at a time. You can kind of do three sometimes, but really most people are using one app at a time on their iPad, sometimes two. That's not sufficient in my experience to how things work on a desktop computer when you're doing work. You've got your browser open, you've got your email app open, maybe you use email in the browser and that's a, a whole other thing, but like you have multiple things open at the same time, you're bouncing between them, you're thinking about different things, you're like arranging windows, you're like taking notes on one side and you're uh, looking at like maybe two other screens over here, like you're utilizing these big displays a lot of time and just like, there's fewer limits. Uh, you feel like you can work faster um, on the Mac than you can on the iPad for a lot of the stuff. Again, because the iPad I don't think is built to actually do that. So I think when you see these reviews and you see people ask these questions, um, I would say the things that we need to answer are one, can the iPad replace the laptop for everyone? Um, and the answer is yes or no. <laughs> like, I think the answer is absolutely no. Um, no device works for everyone, but um, we can, I think we can agree that um, it doesn't work for everyone right now. And the second question is, should it? Should Apple and is Apple focusing on making it so that everyone who's using a Mac can also use an iPad? Or is that not really their focus? Are they happy to have these as separate things that focus on separate groups? I don't know. I, it, it, Apple really kind of has changed their message over time. I think for a few years, they would have said, yes, we want the iPad to replace every workflow everywhere. We'd be okay with every single one of our customers switching from the Mac to an iPad. Over the last couple of years, that message has definitely changed and they really seem more excited about the Mac now. And rightfully so, the new Macs are great and they seem to be on a good track with those devices. But yeah, we're still gonna have this conversation about what the iPad can replace, who it works for and everything. I just think it's a it's a tricky question. Uh, and again, it's different for, every, for different people in different scenarios. At home, if I have one device, I want it to be an iPad. At my work, um, I want it to be a Mac. And again, I do real things on the iPad at home. I run websites from it. I ran a YouTube channel for a long time from it until I got the uh, the MacBook Air recently. So it's, it's a complicated question, but it's definitely a thing you're gonna hear. And I wanted to kind of talk about what I think the problem is. I don't have a good solution. That's one of the things I kind of hate about this video is that I can't think of a great solution how Apple does this, but I think that's the problem they need to address. How do we get parallelism in tasks and just people kind of figuring out what they need to do better on the iPad if we wanted to kind of keep expanding, keep absorbing those things that uh, current Mac users rely on. Uh, it's not just about adding a new pro app. It's not just about um, that sort of thing. You need to do a little bit more than that. So it's really exciting to see where Apple's going with this and I'll be here uh, along for the ride <laughs> with all of you. So I hope you stay subscribed to A Better Computer. I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.